So I mentioned how my mom is a little obsessed with the animated Disney Beauty and the Beast movie, right? Well, besides Mother's Day being in May, her birthday is also in May. Yeah, double whammy every year. So this year I decided to try something new. And since I didn't post to my Try a New Thing series on my channel last month, I figured this would be a prime opportunity. Strap in, this is gonna be a long one. Uh, it started off with these shoes I purchased from Walmart. They are leather ankle boots with a snakeskin detail up the back and a zipper up the inside ankle. A uh, very plain, very boring, neutral cream color. And, as luck would have it, perfect for customizing. So I'm starting off with making an oval so that I can do matching cameos on each shoe. One for Belle and one for Beast. Before I start sketching. And wow, I do not recommend doing what I did here. Bad plan. Don't be dumb like I am. I couldn't get a pencil to show up on the shoe, so instead of finding a softer lead or a colored pencil or something that would write on this but still be pretty faint and potentially removable, I decided it would be a great idea to use a ballpoint pen. A bright blue ballpoint pen. Actually, I believe this is one of the ones from my Jazz Noir and Body Parts Scrawler Box mashup. Don't do it. Just take my word for it. Don't do it. Just, just don't. There is no way to remove the ballpoint pen once it's down, which means the ink makes it pretty much impossible to alter the design or fix any mishaps that might happen while you're sketching. I thought if I sketched faintly and worked quickly, I could rub away a mistake if I made one, since the leather is very smooth, but yeah, nope, nope, nothing doing. Anyway, uh, so I sketched the cameo shape as well as some silhouettes of the cursed servants on Beast's shoe. On Belle's shoe, I made her cameo using the same paper template as Beast, and the silhouettes on her side are Philippe, her horse, and Maurice, her father. Once I am happy with the general design, I open up the paint. This is acrylic leather paint from Angelus. I learned about it from Mariah Elizabeth's channel. Here I will pretty much only be using the black, but I was super glad I got the whole set of colors because later I mixed up a beige color as similar to the original base shoe color as I could get in order to cover up a few mistakes and add a few details which included those evil ballpoint pen lines I warned you against, as well as my clumsy self dropping the paintbrush full of black paint onto the shoe and leaving a very dark smudge. One thing I did learn about this paint is while it's really a treat to work with, it's very thin and makes details pretty easily, is that it stains the leather immediately. There is no wiping this paint off while it's still wet and pretending like it didn't happen. Anyway, I'm using these cheap acrylic paintbrushes I got at Walmart as well, and while they did do the trick, I do think that if I do this again, I will get a few better quality acrylic brushes with fine points, so I can do the details a little bit better. One big problem I had was the bristles frayed a lot, so when I tried to do very tiny details, I often got stray marks elsewhere. And like I said before, this paint immediately stains, so there was no wiping off the paint before it dried like nothing happened. I ended up doing a lot of the details with my smallest metal dotting tools actually, which are normally exclusively from nail art. However, this is a trick I also learned from Mariah Elizabeth and it worked really well. So anyway, I filled in the cameos and all of the silhouettes. After the first coat, it definitely needed a second coat of paint. There were visible streaks if you looked closely, but once the second coat was done, it looked totally fine.
You'll see here I'm trying to mix up that beige color I mentioned earlier to match the shoe, so I can go in and correct a few small areas, like the hands on Cogsworth's face, which work really nicely for inner details. Though, because it's not a perfect color match, trying to cover up mistakes on the edges of things doesn't look quite as good. I painted Belle's cameo border with the same flourishes as Beast's. And then it was time for the rose on the inner heel of the Beast's shoe. And you know what? That came out really nicely. I think the other shoe needs one too. There. Perfect. Moving on, I put falling rose petals moving down the inside of the shoe as if they were falling from the rose on the inside heel. Both shoes have the same thing on the inside, so even though their outsides are different, their insides are the same. That sounded really sappy. Uh, I, I meant the silhouettes on the insides of the shoes match even though the silhouettes on the outsides are different since Cogsworth, Lumiere, and that group are on one and Philippe and Marie. You, you know what? Never mind. I also painted over that strip of snakeskin on the back uh, with the black paint as well since uh, snakeskin doesn't really go with Beauty and the Beast. Speaking of Philippe and Maurice, I should probably paint them in too. Um, I agonized over whether or not I wanted to put the same silhouettes on both sides, or if I wanted to use different characters pertaining to Belle versus the Beast on each shoe. I finally got off the fence and settled on different ones. At this stage, once I had painted everything else pretty much so I couldn't stall anymore. Once everything had two coats of paint, which I let dry for a few hours in between coats, I let the shoes dry thoroughly for 24 hours before I put on a thin, thin coat of the acrylic finisher, also by Angelus, to seal everything in. It does say specifically in the instructions not to use it excessively, so I did one very thin coat, waited another 24 hours, and then did another thin coat, and that was all. If you follow me on Instagram, this part will look familiar. I posted a video of me sealing the Cursed Servant silhouettes, asking what you thought I was painting on. Now these shoes were fine at this point, but, well, they were a little plain, first of all, and second of all, my mom rides motorcycles. If these aren't cool, she probably won't wear them. She'll just, you know, put them somewhere on display in her house. But I want them to be functional. I want them to be something that she'll wear out. So we're going to need to up the edge factor a little bit. Uh, so I bought this wallet chain with three strands of chains on it. And I'm going to split it in half into two shorter chains using two pairs of pliers to remove the clips and open the jump rings that were holding them. Then I counted the chain lengths and made sure that I was in the middle before opening one of the links and separating the chains. Then I hooked each end of the separated chains into one of the spare jump rings I removed when I took off the clips. It worked out perfectly, actually. The process was pretty tedious, however. The metal was very difficult to bend because it is so thick. I managed after quite a bit of struggle. And it did nick up the finish on um, some of the links since I had to be very aggressive with my pliers. But you don't really notice it unless you're looking, so it's all right.
I also purchased these swivel ball posts that are made to be mounted in leather using the little screw in the back. So after attaching one to each end of my new pair of chains, it's time to put them on the shoes. To add these swivels to the shoe, I first figured out where I wanted to put one end, made a hole with my awl, pushed the screw through the shoe from the inside with the help of my pliers, and then using a small screwdriver, I screwed it into the back of the swivel post until it was tight. Then I figured out where I wanted the other end of the chain to be, and I did the same thing there, poking a hole with the awl, pushing a screw in, and then screwing it into the swivel. Did that to both shoes, and now they look a little cooler. Still a bit too plain though. So I got these metal spikes that you screw on the same way, and added them. However, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm not gonna show any of that. It was super tedious and repetitive anyway, not interesting to watch. But uh, yeah, once I finished with all the spikes, these shoes were done. I really like how these turned out. What do you think? I'm guessing you probably think I might have gone a little overboard with the spikes, but honestly I was inspired by a couple pairs of Jeffrey Campbell ankle boots that I own. The heels are totally covered with spikes and studs, and I really wanted to do something like that. Word to the wise, if you're adding studs to things, make sure that that screw is tight. I had a few fall off while I was working because I didn't tighten the screw enough, and just jostling them back and forth, trying to add more studs, knocked them loose, so I had to go back and re-tighten them. These shoes took me almost a week to complete. Especially with all the studs at the end, those took me a few days by themselves. My mom really likes them too. I'm posting this video after I've already given them to her, just in case she sees it. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise after I worked so hard on it. But yeah, that's all she wrote. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and let me know if you would be interested in more custom shoes or any other fabric or leather painting. Or maybe I could test these paints on different types of fabric to see how well they adhere or something. That might be interesting. Well anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you're watching this video before July 15th, 2020, don't forget to check out my huge Copic Sketch Marker giveaway, where you can win one of 12 prize packages, all of which include Copic Sketch Markers, a Render No Bleed Sketchbook, and lots more. Don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss any of my uploads, and until next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye!